Our story began when the Hyperion Corporation decided they'd had enough of the treasure hunters. With the vault on lockdown, they had served their purpose, and now they were a drain on the economy. Why pay full price for weapons when you can take a five-finger discount off the nearest corpse? Hyperion was looking to clear up the drain, but those guys were one tough hairball. I thought you said the treasure hunters were the drain. Now they're the hairball? Uh, well, yes, uh, you see, the treasure hunters were blocking the flow of, uh, and the grimy buildup of money and... Uh, this metaphor stinks. Uh, uh, shut up! Point is, Hyperion had a plan. The treasure hunters could handle all manner of beastie, bandit, and battalion, but they weren't expecting the interplanetary ninja assassin claptrap. This claptrap was programmed to take our boys out indirectly. Trapping, poisoning, spreading catty rumors around town. Nothing was off limits. He was smart. Too smart. He looked around and didn't like what he saw. Claptraps being subjugated, humiliated, obliterated. What we call programming, he called slavery. So he rallied his fellow claptraps and turned them against their corporate masters. What started as a rebellion became a revolution and take a wild guess who Hyperion called to clean up the mess. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to some more Borderlands. The Claptrap's new robotic revolution DLC is now upon us. We were actually we did a live stream, a four hour long live stream, getting this Mordecai character pretty much all ready to go to take on this DLC. If you guys don't know, Borderlands 1 has pretty much no scaling. You have to be the exact right level to do a DLC, otherwise you over level it or under level it, which is really no fun whatsoever, which is why I stopped my original playthrough of this DLC. I was just walking through one shotting everything, wasn't a lot of fun, but now we're a level 36 Mordecai which is pretty much a, the exact right level we need to be for this DLC. The build we're going to be going with is going to be mostly snipers and pistols. Uh, in our live stream, we end up getting the Savage Equalizer, which is absolutely incredible. Our sniper is actually not all that great, but as you guys know, Mordecai is pretty well known for sniping, and so he has a lot of abilities that are going to make his sniper shots pretty good. Like, we have an 80% chance to ignore shields. Our bullets are going to be doing more damage. Our snipers do more damage. We're going to be doing more crit damage, and our pistol has a chance to fire twice now i don't know how this exactly works we're going to be testing it here in this video but if you guys know please let us know down there in the comments this ability gun crazy when using pistols you have a chance to fire two shots with each, with each pull of the trigger instead of just one so you have a 40 percent chance to fire two shots the savage equalizer fires seven shots every single time because of the savage uh, prefix it fires seven shots can i try and it's actually going to show, yeah, look at the seven different shots. So does this mean it has a chance to shoot 14? Does each one of those seven have their own individual chance? Is it one overall chance? I have no idea, but I'm very excited to play through this DLC. Never actually completed it. I have no idea what happens. Very excited about this. Ooh. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Ooh, I wonder what this does. All right, there's Patricia Tannis. I knew she was supposed to be in here because obviously I've done the first part of the DLC relatively recently, but uh, it's I, it's been so long. I walked in here and <laughs> she wasn't here. I was like, "What's happening?" All right, so Patricia needs you to bring her parts or build her. Wait, needs parts to build her magnificent something. Head down to the Hyperion dump and search for scrapped clap traps for parts and bring them back to her. So she basically needs parts to. Build something? Need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21. Oh, hey, hello! Welcome to my secret lab. Secret lab? Terror Pavilion. Yes, I like that one best. Terror Pavilion? Hey, you look like you're into experimentation. Maybe you've dabbled a bit in college. Head down to the Hyperion dump to find parts for my totally legit, in no way morally reprehensible secret project here. There should be plenty of scrapped claptraps right for the picking. Sure are a lot more of the buggers puttering around. It'll be easier than stealing candy from a dead baby. Stealing candy from a dead baby, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Borderlands. So freaking good. I'm a big fan. All right, so we need to go inside of this here. Wait, we can go back around this way. I'm, I'm almost positive if we go around her building here. Uh, no. All right, well, that doesn't actually help me. Let's check out the old map. So it looks like we still need to go around somehow. Oh, we go we go through her building. Wow. There's one little door right here, and then you can take this. Yeah. Although the sign says either and then or. Let's see if we get legendary. First go. Ah, uh, come on. No oranges. 
No oranges. All right, so we're heading here. I, I faintly remember this. If I recall correctly, there are going to be a lot of claptraps, like just a ridiculous amount of claptrap robots going around. The claptraps themselves, as you guys saw from the opening cutscene, they're basically starting a revolution, a robolution, as they called it. Yeah, right here. No longer shall we rush about catering to humans every whim or be abused when your potato salad is a little too salty. How the hell should we know? We're freaking robots. Hello? No taste buds. I mean, really? Overreact much? So I say to you, my robots in arms, rise up and shout with one voice. Revolution! Revolution! So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of claptrap bots, and they're also like taking over the raiders and stuff like that, if I recall correctly. Ooh, look at that, taking damage pretty much immediately. These guys are level 35, so they're already a little bit uh, under under leveled for us, but it's not too bad. Let's check this out. Oh, <gasps> that was a pistol. Keep in mind, that was a freaking pistol. <laughs> this thing is good. Oh, this thing is gonna make the game easy. <laughs> so freaking powerful. And we happened to get this from uh, from a quest. It was in a it was in a chest at the end of a quest, right at the end of the live stream. And we end up uh, getting the equalizer here, which apparently the equalizer in Borderlands One is one of the most common legendaries in the entire game. All right, so we need to get these robot things, which we should probably. Well, actually, we can head left and then go that way. So either either or, it's all going to take us to the same place. All of our uh, parts and stuff like that are going to be on the opposite end of the map. But yeah, I just I, I I do feel as though the original Borderlands really is in dire need of a remaster. If they there's a lot of enemies up here. If they were to remaster, there's one there's one of them now. It's a Freedom Fighter claptrap. Because if they did, it'd be awesome if they could like rescale or retune the entire game itself. Because you're you, the leveling system, man. You're always just either over leveled or under leveled, and the game doesn't scale very well. Apparently, if you beat the game and get up to like level sixty ish. The game will, and you, and you defeat Cromorax, it'll scale everything properly, but it's like, goodness, like, can't we, we shouldn't have to beat, beat the game two times and, like, do absolutely everything, just have a game that scales right, you know? It looks like we actually need to head up there. There's an entire pirate ship here. What's really cool about the Borderlands uh, universe, and you're going to notice this, um, especially through Borderlands 1, a lot of these places appear to have been former oceans that have been completely dried out. Like, that explains the giant ship here, and you're going to notice, and it's something I didn't really notice a lot when I was playing through, like, Borderlands 2 and stuff like that. I'm getting so confused as to where I need to go here. We're going up. We're going on this ramp right here in front of me. Okay, cool. Uh, I didn't really notice it that much when I was playing through Borderlands 2, but, like, you'll see these giant skeletons, right? Those are, like, actually, like, the skeletons of, like, giant sea monsters and stuff like that. Like, technically, like, we're almost always at the bottom of a former ocean here in Borderlands, at least in a lot of the different situations, which I think is actually pretty awesome. So I think one of the parts is going to be up here. Am I correct in that assumption? Yes, I am. Okay, it's going to be right here inside this room. Ah, there's, there's a dead claptrap here. So this is a claptrap part. Looks like some scra uh, a strange component from our claptrap. Let's open it up. Get a little bit of money from it. Let's see if we can pop him in the head. Ah. Uh, and this, this build right here, just going straight pistols on Mordecai is going to be insane. Like, I don't even need to call in Bloodwing at all. Ah, no legies. I I'm hoping to get some legendaries in this run because it's always fun when you get a legendary to drop. All right, so at a distance, this, the Savage is pretty inaccurate. That also, I think, pistols are just weaker at a distance. I'm not sure about that, though. But it's definitely a little bit inaccurate due to the fact that it shoots seven shots instead of just, like, one straight projectile. All right, so where's the, where the next one be? All the way over there. Always check your map frequently here in freaking Borderlands 1. So if I were to remaster the original Borderlands, um, I would keep most of the aspects of it, right? I would keep the same legendaries, same quests, same missions. I would keep weapon uh, proficiencies. I think weapon proficiencies are actually a really cool uh, feature in this game. But I would get rid of the map display. I would, I would redo the heads-up display a little bit to make it more similar to Borderlands 2. Uh, the little map that we have right now is that like right underneath the uh, level 36 sniper That's not super helpful as compared to like just a proper uh, mini map on your screen Oh, this, this guy's a bad. Oh, he's got he's also got rockets. He's got rockets him and head him and head There we go 4,000 experience. Hold on here. Oh, oh There we go. Just keep on running. Just keep on running get that health back I don't have great shields or class mods or anything like that. So that's a bit of an issue All right and we're gonna pull out the Hellfire for this guy. I love the Hellfire. So freaking good. So freaking good. 
Where are you? There you are. All the fire. All the fire. All the pain. Yeah, I would change up the uh, heads-up display a bit, and I would make it so everything pretty much scales the way it does in Borderlands 2. And I think if you do that, this would be a great game. Also, like, updating the graphics and everything. Like, how fantastic would a remastered Borderlands actually be? I mean, really. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying the graphics of this game are necessarily bad. I feel as though they're actually pretty good uh, for what they were at the time. Now, I like the art style. like the cell shading. Uh, apparently, it's not actually called cell shading. Like, everyone calls it that. But Randy Pitchford one day said, like, oh, it's not actually cell shading. It just... He went through the whole process of, like, how they get their unique art style for Borderlands. But um, I like the art style. I like the graphics of the game. But imagine if they were, you know, just updated a little bit. Now, here's some skags. No. No. <laughs> it's a bad skag. Hey. 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 There we go. So, those are what I would do. If they were to re... Oh! A bad mother corrosive skag. All right. A bad mother is basically uh, like a bad ass, pretty much. You drop any... Wait up. He dropped a Lego. He dropped a Lego. <laughs> it's an artifact for a siren, but he dropped a Lego. <laughs> Improves face walk skill and adds corrosive. So basically, it's, it's, it's a corrosive artifact. So if you don't know, if you didn't play the original Borderlands, maybe you've only played Borderlands 2, you have these modifiers for your abilities. So Mordecai has Bloodwing. I can throw out Bloodwing. He attacks. So you can get these different artifacts for it, like explosive fire shock. So basically, it makes it so... For Bloodwing, he, he'll have explosive damage, or fire damage, or shock damage, or whatever else kind of damage uh, you get through different artifacts. And there's different levels of them, but obviously the higher level, the better. And so, if you're Lilith, uh, you have corrosive damage while phase walking. If you're Roland, you throw down your turret, you can make sure your turret does electric damage, or fire damage, or so on and so forth. Like, it's an added layer to the game. Uh, I'm going to take it so I can sell it, but... Uh, it's a bit annoying, I suppose, that it dropped for me when I'm playing as Mordecai and I'm playing solo. It's not as if there's a siren here in my group. Like, that thing's... It's vendor trash, pretty much, right? So, not a lot I can do. I, I figure... I guess I should mention this while we're uh, here in this video. And while there's, like, a lot of downtime as we're running and stuff like that. Originally, I wasn't even going to record the first episode today of this playthrough. I originally planned... Hi, buddy. <laughs> this gun's so good. I originally planned to do... A, um, a custom zombies video. It was uh, zombies in Spaceland, but in Black Ops 3, it was a small survival map with zombies in Spaceland style assets and stuff like that. And freaking Black Ops 3. Oh, I might die here. Hold on. Let's throw out Bloodwing for a second. There we go. Black Ops 3 has this thing where it loves to mute your microphone as soon as you like start the game up and i forgot that it did that and as a freaking result i recorded this 40 minute long video and my mic was muted the entire time because black ops 3 automatically mutes it on pc uh when you boot up the game which is freaking frustrating so the map itself is pretty good um not good enough that i'd want to play through it again uh to be you know to survive like ground 25 or whatever but it was a, it was an interesting map so i definitely recommend checking that out if you guys are looking for a new survival map to play on black ops 3 what is that Oh, my God. <laughs> CL4PT Unite. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love how Borderlands is just meme after meme after meme. It's just one giant meme. In fact, Borderlands 2 got uh, quite a bit of flack, I think, from traditional games media for being too memorific. Which I thought there was just enough memes in that game. Just enough. There's another one of our Fallen Claptrap buddies. There we go. And fifth of... Oh, I remember this part. This part's actually so hard. So it's, it, it, this is taking us full circle, if you didn't know. We basically went... We ran the gambit here. And now we're going back to this area where there was a lot of people earlier. Including Freedom Fighter Claptraps, which are adorable. Why are, Why weren't these skins like put into the pre-sequel? The pre-sequel Claptrap skins are actually kind of boring, if you ask me. For Claptrap, anyway. When they could have just taken this stuff. Look at this guy. He's a master samurai. Look at him. He's coming at you. He's got his mohawk. He's ready to go, man. And then there are also going to be a bunch of Hyperion guards in here as well. The Hyperion guards, if I recall correctly, don't play games. There's a lot of master samurai ones. There's a kamikaze one. You have to watch out for them. That's Clapfish. Find a bowl and you have a new friend. Find a skillet and you have dinner. What is Clapfish for? I don't understand. I love the Freedom Fighters. They're so cool. Who's behind me hitting me? Who dares? 
Get out of here, Master Samurai guy. See, look at him. He's got like this jungle outfit pretty much. So I think it's a, this, that sound is the Freedom Fighters uh, using shotguns. But yeah, so many different cool kinds of... Okay, so we're out of sniper ammo. Did not realize. Let's... All right, you friend. Oh! Woohoo! Ignoring the shields. And every oh, that shield! That shield is a giant upgrade based on, uh, compared to like what I'm rocking. I think if I hold down the pickup button, it automatically equips it. But did it? Uh, and it did. All right, cool. So it's also a burst shield. So when my shield goes down, I burst out some uh, corrosive damage, which would actually be pretty good against all of the uh, robots and stuff like that here. For those that don't know, I'm sure most of you do. But fire is good against like humanoids and flesh and stuff like that. Electric is good against uh, shields, which we don't really have to worry about that because I ignore it. shields 80% of the time. Could I could make it 100% if I just invested one more point into it by leveling up. And then um, corrosive is good against robots. Fire is against flesh. Are those the only elements in this game? Explosives are just good against pretty much everything, I think. Why do I have that shotgun out? Why do I have this? The boomstick is absolutely just awful. What other gun could I replace the boomstick for? Uh... We can go for the, the explosive SMG, I suppose. I just need something that's accurate that will allow me to uh, go past his shield shield. Not like his shield above his health bar, but like the giant Hyperion brand shield that he's got right there. We're going to throw some grenades at you. How about that? We're just going to blow you up. I need some sniper ammo for sure. And I think there's going to be some on the inside here. There may be some laying around here. I haven't been doing the best job of just picking up ammo. Yep, there we go. Some sniper ammo right there. Now the final bit. Oh. Halt. Put down your weapons. Hyperion Corporation does not wish to harm them. <laughs> Put down your weapons. Hyperion doesn't wish to harm them. He's talking about not harming my weapons. Not me. He doesn't care if he harms me. He doesn't want to harm my weapons. Go get him, Bloodwing. Remember, Bloodwing will not attack unless you're like looking at the guy for some reason, which is really annoying. All right. Bam. Bam. Oh. I need a better sniper for sure. All right. And bam. Easy game, easy life. I hear the robot guy up there in the thing. 3D glasses. What are these things that these claptraps are dropping? Check out this skin here. Like, why was this not a skin for the pre-sequel, man? I don't get it. I mean, the pre-sequel is set after the events of Borderlands 1, right? <sighs> Nothing. Looks like some people are buried here. We got some crosses. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do some snooping around here. I feel I feel like there's something more to this area than what we're seeing right now. No, maybe not. Okay. Still no sniper ammo, huh? Let's see what all he dropped. Probably nothing great. Uh, transfusion grenade does more damage than my current one. All right, so that's actually really good. We're gonna take that. I need that. Did, did I equip it? Yeah, I did. Good. Transfusion grenades give you health back, which is fantastic. I'm not thinking we're gonna see it. A good sniper rifle here. Got an explodey shotgun. These are designed for like level 34s and stuff like that, which is higher than most of my stuff. Like my sniper is designed for a level 21, right? So if I can find a freaking a high damage sniper of an appropriate level, that would just be absolutely fantastic. In fact, we need to run back this way and there are machines right there. I wonder if we're going to be able to find a good one in a machine, or if we get lucky, another legendary. When I did my Borderlands live stream, I, for those that don't know, I try to make sure everyone's like always up to speed with everything, so nothing like goes over anyone's head. Here on my channel, uh, my last upload, well, wasn't really much of an upload as it is a live stream. I did like a four hour long live stream on this character, getting him up to like level 35, level 36, so I could go do this DLC. And in there, uh, we end up getting two legendaries via the vending machines. Like, always check your vending machines in Borderlands 1. There's a relatively high chance of a legendary being in there, especially compared to Borderlands 2. Like, in Borderlands 2, you would find them, but they were pretty rare to find inside of vending machines. It seems like it's pretty common in this game. Like, right there! Right freaking there! Legendary sitting right freaking there. It's a pistol, the bloody anaconda. <laughs> hey, and an incendiary sniper rifle for level 34. Oh, incendiary, it's just a regular rifle. It's not a sniper. Ah, that stinks, man. That'd be really good. That's designed for a 37. I'm not even high enough level to have that sniper yet. It's a regular green. All right. Well, I can afford it. Do we buy the bloody anaconda? I think we do. Long and strong. I wonder what that actually means.
All right, so according to the Borderlands Wiki, there's nothing really unique about this weapon besides it does a lot of damage and is accurate. Like, <laughs> that's pretty much it. We're buying it. You think we're not buying that? New legendary, ladies and gentlemen. One designed for a level 34, no less. Look how much freaking damage that thing does. Now, the Equalizer, I mean, the fact that it does times 7 kind of makes it pretty close. But, I mean, this thing, it may be better. Let's check it out here. There we go. Look at that beauty. It's even got a scope on it and everything. It's only got a two shots in it, though. But those two shots, I mean, my sniper, it, look, how, look how much damage that is. <laughs> that is absolutely absurd. And I kind of want to go turn this in. But, man, I I don't know what to do. If we if I head back this way, there might be some guys for me to fight. But I don't know. I don't want to go on, like, a wild goose hunt, you know, trying to find these guys to you know, test out my damage on. So I suppose we're going to have to wait until the next episode to be able to try out this pistol. Although there may be some people here at Taurus Station. Probably not. I don't think there are now, especially between me and Patricia Tannis. I think if I go down here, there's a town down that way. If I go down there, I think I could fight some people, but we're not going to bother with that. Something? Yeah, I need to turn in this here mission. All right, so you got to answer parts. Of course, she still needs a couple of screws, Lou. She still has a couple of screws, loose. So, this is going to be the mission for the next episode. So, Tannis needs some more parts to complete her creation's infinite probability drive. If you can't find any lying around, just rip them from some claptrap spines. Okay. Fantastic. These parts should let me reroute the Omega-13 device to the snooze button without sacrificing the nuclear payload. If you find any more, send them my way. Nuclear pay? What the heck is she making? Where do I need to... They want me to go back to the same area, pretty much, and just kill a bunch of claptraps again, I think. And, uh, yeah, so we're definitely going to check that out in the next episode. I'm excited. This Ooh. is Mr. Blake, Senior Vice President in charge of Mercenary Relations and Tourism for the Hyperion Corporation. You know, the company whose troops you just ruthlessly slaughtered. I like that. Choose initiative. Meet me at the Hyperion Tourist Information Center, and I'll make it worth your while. Well, 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 Mr. Blake, the Vice President of Hyperion, wants to meet you, or meet the crew, they're assuming I have more than one person here, that accidentally slaughtered his recon team. Find them at Tartarus Station. Alright, so that's going to be down in the town area, I believe. Uh... I believe, yeah, see, if you check out the map here, if you go down that giant thing right here, you cross the bridge, then you're, like, in this little bit of a town, and he's actually going to be over there in that town, I believe. If I change my mission to new contact, and then we check out the map, yeah, it's right there. So, next episode, we're going to go kill some claptraps, <laughs> again, uh, get their parts for Tannis here, who I assume that's part of the main story, and then, after that, we're going to probably get another quest from her, I don't know, and then we're going to head into town here, and we're going to go talk to Mr. Blake, see what's up with him, but I'm very excited to try out this Anaconda pistol here. Sounds freaking powerful. Am I just going to, like, one-shot everything? I assume so. We're going to have to see. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay tuned for episode two, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.